All right, it is the end of November and we are getting closer to December and it is time again for a quick recap video on what I have been up to this month. This month was pretty painful in terms of development, if I'm honest about it. I was up to solving the infamous weapon clipping issue where the weapon model is clipping into the game world. And the issue with that is that it breaks immersion and it just looks plain ugly. In the case that you don't know what I'm talking about, I am talking about this issue here. And to solve this, I have tried almost every solution. And for example, I have tried masking out the weapon using either custom depth or the custom stencil function. Um, this way we would render it on top of everything, but there are multiple problems with this approach. So first one, for example, is Whenever the weapon clips into a wall, yes, you will see the weapon being rendered on top of the wall, but the shadows will be wrong. So since you are still clipping into the wall, no matter what you do, you're just uh, displaying it with a different custom depth, but the weapon model itself is still clipping into the wall. Well, whenever it clips into the wall, the part of the weapon which is inside the wall for me begins to jitter like crazy and it produces some weird outlines as you can see on the screen right now. Then I tried another approach so I tried to render the weapon to a screen capture 2D and display it as an overlay on top of the screen. And here I had the problem that I was missing shadows entirely and in my case it also produced a heavy jitter like you can see now so i don't know what was going on there but for me this was unacceptable and i just tried the next thing also i have tried the panini projection which is apparently used also by unreal tournament but for me the panini projection did not stick well with the approach i had already taken like rendering it with a custom field of view and stuff like that having the horizontal plus already implemented i uh, I, I tried the Panini projection, but for me, it just wasn't the right fit. Um, also, the shadows were pretty weird on, on, on the thing. So in my case, the weapon could project its own shadow onto the rendered model itself, which uh, was weird. And I don't know, for me, this didn't also quite work. So I moved on. One more approach I tried for which uh, I got an idea from this post over here. Um, it actually works quite well. So the idea is to scale the weapon by X amount so that it fits inside of the collision capsule of the player and thus preventing possible clipping and also moving it by X amount towards the camera so that the perspective matches. So it basically scales it by an amount and moves it towards the camera by an amount which does not change the initial perspective you set the weapon model to have. And my implementation works, but only for the most obvious cases where the player is front facing the wall and running into it. So for this, it solves it. But when you hug a wall and you look up and down, it is still clipping for whatever reason. I have a clip over here. So this is what it looked like for me. It worked fine, but also whenever you change the scale value to something super small, you begin to have also artifacts and clipping issues with the near plane. Then there was also another method suggested by many people, which I personally find to be the least favorable, because in my opinion, it just heavily changes the gameplay of the game. Hiding the weapon model whenever a player gets close enough to the wall, that the player will just put away the weapon and you can't shoot, so you will just display an empty screen without a model. I don't know, to me this sounds um, that it influences the gameplay way too much. I mean, just imagine you would be playing Doom and whenever you get close to the wall, the Doom guy would put away the gun. This to me sounds like a very different game from the Doom I know, and this is why I didn't chose uh, to go with this approach. 
So last but not least, I compiled a custom engine build and edited the render passes, which at first didn't work at all because I understood nothing of uh, what was going on there. But after digging into the code for a week or so, um, I started to see progress in form of I had my own primitive scene proxy attributes and mesh processors injected and I could render specific objects uh, to the depth pass and just uh, ignore them in the base pass and things like that. But this didn't play out and again, I probably messed something up, but there was also a horrible jitter effect and it's weird and I don't want to go back there and I kind of wasted my time there as well. And then I stumbled upon a video on YouTube which showed how to solve this entire problem with uh, materials only and it was not using the Panini projection or whatever. So yeah, partly it was basically doing the same thing I did with my move scale approach but also additionally they put the field of view into the material and they fixed the near plane clipping and yeah I, I gave it a shot and it worked but I still wanted to have parts of it in C++ since I wanted to be able to use uh, the horizontal plus as the base of what I of what I have been building over the past couple of weeks so I made some adjustments to it and made it work hand in hand with my other approach and in the final solution, um, the system has now three floating point parameters. So we have the field of view, we have the uniform move scale amount, and we have the depth pixel scale. And each of those has to be tweaked on a per model basis, unfortunately. So there is no configuration free solution to this, uh, to this issue at the moment without creating a custom engine build. And I am already preparing a video tutorial on this topic, but I have to warn you that this won't be the last video on this topic, because as you can see here, there is still another issue which we will need to solve, and it is about shadows. So if you take a look at the shadow, they are pretty broken, and the effect gets worse whenever we decrease the depth scaling value. One way of solving this issue, the easy way is to just disable shadow rendering for the gun model and that's that. And I think that this is a great solution. So if you think that you can, you can live without the shadow on the weapon model, um, just go for it. For me, um, at this point in time, I'm not quite sure on how to solve this properly. I have some ideas, but I'm not sure if they will work or not. I will keep you in the loop on this topic, but as of now, I am pretty happy with the end result and yeah, that's that. And in case you care, I got myself another cat, so her name is Sherlock and she's also a British short hair and she and Watson became really good friends over the last couple of weeks and also check them out on Instagram and follow them and yeah see you in the next one